What's new in the world, my people? My name is Cyblade, and welcome back to Crash Bandicoot the Insane Trilogy. This should finally be the last l episode of the first Crash game. We'll wrap up the last two levels. I gotta get the gem in, this being one of them. The Great Gate and the other is Boulder Dash, so... Just them two, and we'll... We'll see the ending at... Or the real ending at the end of the Great Hall, and then when... If we have time, which we probably will, there's, these levels are pretty short. We'll start off Crash 2. Cortex Strikes Back. <laughs> uh, if only Cortex could actually be that intimidating. No, no, no! Oh, come on again! So that's a bit cheap whenever they have the parts like that when, you know, you bounce on a certain thing, a certain box, or a certain object, then you can't get the, get the box above it. I don't like that. Ha. Go away. Whoa! Come on. Whoa! Go, got the katanas. Katana, meet your replacement. Yep, I'm pretty sure I said this in the last video, or some one of them. Coco's basically from the second game onward, they're just to replace Tana. Because Crash can't have a girlfriend, apparently. Maybe the people that made the game thought that made him feel too much like Mario or something. Whoa! Whoa, aha! Still feel like this game needs a ledge grabbing mechanic. Oh, just that. Okay. Come on. No, no, no. Ah, crap. No, I don't. I'm pretty sure you can't do that. Oh, I can! I can. I don't believe that. That was MLG right there. That being said, someone tell me what MLG actually means. I don't. Not, I honestly don't really know. Bygones be bygones, but you ruined that. Just ask for a little hospitality, that's not much. No, you guys had to try to kill me, and now I had to send you flying into the abyss. There we go. Turn her laptop into a diamond. That's a sweet app. Gonna unlock the purple gem elsewhere. Already did that after unlocking the orange gem from the lab. I still don't like that if you had to get another colored gem before you could get the colored gem. 
But get used to that, because that's coming up a lot in the next couple of Crash games. I guess they thought avoiding certain death wasn't enough. They still had to test you, see if you're really committed to the game. Again, assuming the natives made these places and these giant moving pillars you need to jump across to navigate these giant pits, why would they make them moving? That just seems like an unnecessary death trap, especially if this is how their average everyday citizens have to get around. It'd be like if our modern society had, like, I don't know. I mean, I don't know, some form of vehicles rolling down the road, and to get away from them, we have to jump across giant... run across the road without crosswalk or something. I don't know, that's... I'm bad with metaphors or... DISAPPOINTED! Yikes, I don't want it. Similes, whatever, I'm trying to get across, but... I'm assuming all of you understood what I meant. Of course... One could always dive to the side instead of running down the same path that uh, Boulder is traveling, you know. Look at Cinema Sense, they always make fun of them. That's a cliche now, the protagonist went to the Prometheus school of running away from things. Of course, I think what they underestimate is how hard it is to think when something massive and going to crush you is barreling towards you at high speeds. You don't really think of just running to the side, you just think of running away. Yeah, that makes sense. No, come on! Oh! You know what, doubling down. Come on, give me the mask already. Come on. Let's go, let's go. Wow, honestly that boulder is as slow as all heck. I don't understand. Suddenly doesn't feel any, very threatening anymore. I don't know what we are all worried about. Uh. Yeah, if anything, these giant pits are scarier than the boulder. The boulder takes issue with that comment. Die. There we go. Finally. Go mess with Cortex one last time. Oh, wrong button. Just for, you know, take up a little bit of extra time. 
yeah, maybe we won't do the startup crash tube just yet. We'll save that for another video. Come on. Whoa. Seriously, does he test any of this stuff? You'd think he would have figured out that uh, green plasma can be shot back at him and, uh, oh, I don't know, uh, not made the green plasma part of his thing. That's a very good question. Ow! Take that. Oh, man, that's a bad. Nice try, sucker. Have a nice flight. See you next fall. I had to get in just one more terrible joke. Again, I feel this like this should be the real ending because this is where, you know, the villain is defeated and everything, but I guess the game decided otherwise. No, we need a different ending. This is messed up. They make you jump across all these platforms because you can still fall to your death and die. So, yeah, you can literally die on the way to your happy ending. Like that one arcade game back in the day. Uh, oh no! Died right before the happy ending. So yeah, old cartoon game, arcade game made by Don Bluth and Dragon's Quest, and then they made a sequel. Which, yeah, you can pl you need to play through the happy ending, and you can die during it, so... You know, I can ma suddenly see why they didn't want Crash having a girlfriend. He's a bit of a creeper when girls are around. Yeah. So she just saved his life. Or he just saved her life, and then she left him for Pinstripe Potteroo. <laughs> you serious? Uh, Papu sold the ruins of Castle Cortex to a, re to a resort developer. He then used the proceeds to open up a big and tall shop on the island. After intense therapy and eight years of higher education, Dr. Rue went on to write a, the well-received book Through the Eye of the Vortex, uh, Theory of Rapid De Evolution. Koala Kong moved to Hollywood and landed a motion picture deal with Universal, of Universal Productions. He's currently working with a speech therapist to improve his diction. Pinstripe moved to Chicago, where he now owns and operates a citywide sanitation company. He is saving money for his up-and-coming Goober National Campaign. After the disappearance of his mentor, Dr. Nitri Nitrous Brio rediscovered his first love, Tending Bar. He is good at mixing those drinks, even though he probably shouldn't be drinking those potions. The world has heard nothing more of Cortex since Crash foiled his plans. But evil geniuses are harder to squash than cockroaches. I mean, he was only really done for like a year. And... See, there's no credits even after this. So, by all accounts, yeah, Cortex should be the last obstacle. So, but yeah. So, like I said, yes. Apparently, the widely accepted theory is, well, it hasn't been confirmed anywhere as far as I believe, but... After saving her life, she leaves him for this guy. 
The machine gun toting maniac. So I was wrong. It turns out Cortex wasn't the one who stole Crash's girl. It was this guy. Ah, oh, I didn't get him. You're gonna pay for that, buddy. Give me my girl. Oh, no, no, ah. Oh. This is Cortana. There we go. Oh yeah. That is the story of Crash Bandicoot, or at least the first game, you know. You do so much for a girl trying to save her life from an evil mad scientist, and eventually she leaves you for a gangster with a gun problem. But what can you do? So that's Crash Bandicoot, the first game. Very fun, started a great series, even though it had its ups and downs in the PS2 era, but still a good game overall. So I hope you guys all enjoyed this, and next time we'll be starting up Crash 2 Cortex Strikes Back. I hope you all enjoyed this. If you liked it and you want to see more, go ahead and slash that subscribe button. If you like this video, give a quick cut to the like button. Leave a comment down below, share it around with all your friends, follow me on Facebook, and I'll see you in the next video, but until then, my people, stay sharp.